Wrestlecade. Coming soon during Wrestlecade weekend. Very excited. Tess is about to talk all the shit about on everybody. Everyone. Nobody's safe. Especially you, Sandman. That's true. Nah. <laughs> Do you see Jordan's tweet? Yeah, I love it. Oh, God. We'll talk. We'll start with that. I couldn't believe she tweeted that. I canceled Sandman on Twitter, by the way. <laughs> by the way. I gotta go see this. Jordan Savage. Yeah, she doesn't give a fuck. Nope. Do we have to be mic'd up or anything, or it doesn't matter? No, no, it's a uh, boom mic, so it's really easy. Um, what... Is there any topics you don't want to talk about? Um, I can't think of anything that like would make me uncomfortable. Good. I have a challenge. What is it? Oh, God. No, I'm just joking. What is it? I was saying, if that's your challenge. If, we if need an on-camera to... microwave for these. You microwave cookies? Dude, they get softer when you microwave them, and it's like... Yeah, we, everyone knows that. Do you want one microwave real quick? No, don't make me eat cookies. Have to eat. I'm going to get you one microwave real quick. Uh, at least one? It's the law. It's the law? Yeah. All right. You can start now. Are we recording? I'm ready. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Egos Amigos. Sitting here. Wait, what's your show called? Egos Amigos? That's right. It's in Spanish. Egos Amigos. Amor. It's in Spanish. Egos Amigos. Yeah. Yo, what is it with this with impact booking and all ego? And it wasn't you. Yeah. I don't know if anyone can hear you. My guest oh, sitting next to me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. I'm having a blast right now. Uh, so my guest is Tessa Blanchard, and she's currently warming up uh, some cookies. One of them specifically for me. Uh, I was told off camera it's the law, and I need to eat it. So Brian Cage, don't Donna be made the best me. cookies. Okay. If you're saying this is the best. It's so good. Let's see. Oh. Oh. It's like warm mm. and it's like crunchy, but just the right amount of soft. Do you see that? I've been into it just like this. <laughs> um, oh, this is very Brian good. Brian and Melissa were talking about cookies. Or Brian was talking about cookies and Melissa was right there. And Brian was like, uh, they're decadent, right? Like they're super decadent. And Melissa was like, what the fuck? I used that word, and he just took it. Whoa, words aren't owned by anybody. Oh, just started, really? Well, yeah, this is it. This is my show. Oh, we're on? Oh, yeah. Where's the intro? I did it while you were warming oh, up. Oh, that was real? Goodness. That was real. Welcome oh, to my show, Egos Amigos. Egos this Amigos. Is, this is my amigo, Tessa Blanchard. We're eating cookies. Hold on. I just don't want to talk. Natural. I'm a cookie button. monster, practically. That's true. You tried to force cookies on me at Impact? That's probably true. No, it is. You did. McDonald's cookies. I think you ate them with me, though. I did not. Mm -hmm. I said no. You didn't eat one? No. Then Josh, no, you ate one. No, I didn't. Uh, the interviewer did. What's her name? Um, Gabby. Gabby, yes. How do I not know that? It's my daughter's name. But, um, yeah. Your daughter's the cooler Gabby. You know what? I Gabby agree. will never see, someone's going to tag her now that I said yeah. that. Well, I'm, I'm sure she'll never see this. Yeah, I know. She definitely will. Okay, first of all, um, the first and only guest I've ever had brought me a gift. Nobody, el the nobody else has done that. That's how classy Tessa is. Look at this shaker cup. This is amazing. Get a little zoom in on that. Yep. What about it? Look at that. Double-sided. That means she's not cheap. You know, wrestlers, they only put the design on the front. But when you're rich... <laughs> You put the design on the front I'm and rich. the back. I just bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny when you said that, and then you actually ended up. <laughs> we actually moved into my house. It was like, I had so many people come up to me after that, and they were like, I heard you say on Ethan's podcast or on his blog that you're the highest paid person at Impact. Is that true? And I'm like, what kind of question is that? <laughs> say yes. Yes, I am. There you Aside go. Aside from Moose. Yeah, <laughs> wait, why? Is he? I don't know, he tweeted it, so. He did? It must be true. Well, no, because his Twitter is in character and his Instagram. Oh, that's Moose talking. Ogechi Quinn Ojinaka is. He's gonna kill me for saying his full name. It's on Google. Is it? He was in the NFL, yeah. Okay. What you, he's gonna be like, wow, she said it right. 
I'll be like, yeah, that's a. Actually, one time uh, when he was my roommate, he came in and he was like, uh, he was like, Tessa, I'm about to give you a test on if you're my real friend or not. Okay. And I'm like, okay, what is it? He goes, what's my real name? And I was like, Ogechi. And he was like, you a real friend? And I'm like, cool. Aww. <laughs> Moose has a very special place in my heart. I'm going to end that there. So Tessa is uh, a guest I've been hunting down to get on the show for a while. But I feel like you're pretty, you're like a, you're hard to track down. Like you're aloof sometimes. Like I've tried to book you many times for Alpha One too. You tried to book me one time. That's not true. Three times. Really? Almost as many times as Brian Cage no-showed me. <laughs> oh, he's right there. <laughs> oh, hey, Brian. That is true. Do you want a cookie? No, I already had some. He said no. Brian Cage said no, which is very weird. That's weird. He's a cookie monster. Fan. Yeah, if, yeah, that should be your guys' tag team name. So what's the deal? The why, cookie monsters. Why are you so aloof? What's the deal? Like, is that part of the mystique of Tessa Blanchard? I think it is. I don't mean to. I'm really bad at keeping a balance sometimes because I feel like lately, especially... All of our uh, schedules of impact have gotten a little heavier. Yeah. So I feel like everyone's been a little bit like distant from their home lives or whatnot For because sure. we've just been so busy. And then when you get home, you're tired, but you have to try to keep that balance with like not be probably wor worse with you with like having a kid and a wife L is like, like I, I you I'm, can't be tired. No, you're, you're not home. allowed. I'm not. I'm I'm literally not allowed to be tired. Because you still gotta be yeah. dad and husband and. Because there's only so many days I have before I have to leave again. So yeah. by that time, it's like I better have put in work to so earn the. It's hard to find time to uh, reboot. I get it. Sleep on the airplane. <laughs> but I feel like you are very meticulous because I've traveled with you and I've seen your like booklet of <laughs> travel details. <laughs> 572 miles to this place and then 300. She's joking about herself, but this is actually true. We did, uh, you can check it out on one of my vlogs, but we did a trip and she pulled out a piece of paper. The Texas and had loop, yeah? To the mile, yeah. To the mile of where we needed to go and what we needed to do and like how we were going to get there. And Because I wanted to, because no one mapped it out for us, but it was like, it didn't really make sense like where our hotels were, were like halfway points, kind of to our next town, but I'm like super old school like that. Like I'd rather just have the show, drive to the next town, go to sleep, wake up, already be there. Instead of like that halfway crap. How long have you been wrestling? <laughs> I'm just saying. How long have you been wrestling? Uh, six years. <laughs> <laughs> super old school like that, the grizzled vet. I love it. I uh, like, see, okay, so I had no clue how long you've been wrestling. I think the first time I met you was at, I wanna say, AIW in Cleveland, Ohio, and God, that must have been like four or five years you ago. You had been wearing at the time, because I was like, "Is she Canadian?" Because you had red and white with the flames. Yeah, yeah. So like, so like that, and then there was rumors backstage that you got paid a lot of money, and I was like, "Oh damn, Tessa Blanchard is about to be this big thing." So there was was it really? Yeah. So like, listen, wrestlers talk. You know how this shit works. So <laughs> so I probably made no money at that time. Maybe. But everyone was like, oh man, this is like, she's doing great. She's doing great. And now you're telling me that's pretty much the start of your career? Yeah, and I was awful at wrestling too. <laughs> you should see my match. It was probably How? god okay, awful. So that's so funny because so where, where did you train? You trained, trained with uh, George South? George South. Was Cedric Alexander out of that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I've booked Cedric for Alpha One, and this is like during and before Ring of Honor, like before he did anything like really big there. Yeah. We would talk, and I was like, dude, you're amazing. Like, how long have you been wrestling? He's like, four years. Like, oh, if you watch anything I did in my fourth year, I, you would think I was like a backyard wrestler. So I don't know if George South is the greatest trainer of all time or just by happenstance. Ever. You know what? I have this theory, though. Like, I, I think he's so good at training people because he drills basics into people. And, like, if you talk back or, like, you get something wrong or you need him to repeat something, you're bumping, like, 10, 50 times. 10 to 50, somewhere between there. Someone really? talked back once and he had a bump until George stopped. And George went on telling us a story while he was bumping. I met George Good, this like, weekend. like five minutes. It's a solid long story no matter what but it is. But it's true, like your basics are so, like I don't know everything, but I like training basics to people because I'm confident in my basics. Like I don't know all the other like cool stuff and whatnot, but like footwork and like basic wrestling things, See, I'm pretty I, confident in. I have a theory that you can't teach that. It's just like you either get it or you don't. That's partially true too. That's personal. And but I only say that because I never got trained to be a wrestler. 
I don't know. I feel like basics are so important, though, and if you don't have good basics, they're going to come back to bite you in the ass later. Oh, 1,000? Like some people who get TV exposure really early, and then maybe maybe they're not an awful wrestler, and then I'll give you an example, and just, just because this is one like... Ooh, say names. This will be good. Well, I'm not, I'm not talking bad about them or anything, but like I did a tour of Japan with Rebel, and she's someone who people didn't really take seriously as a wrestler. Um, maybe she had like a few bad matches that were on a bigger platform, so sure. more eyes were on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but maybe she didn't have her basics drilled into her first, so she's had to come back and like learn them now. But like the tour of Japan that we had, like I tagged with her a few times, I've wrestled her a few times. I don't think she's bad at all. Like I had some really good matches with her, and maybe people don't get to see that because she was given the exposure earlier on. Oh, so uh, Josh Alexander does seminars and like one thing he'll always say is like, everyone always asks the same question is like, how do I get to this show? And his response is amazing. It's like, you don't want to be here yet because lots of people watch this. Right now you're trying to figure out and like learn and become better so that when the opportunity comes, you're actually ready for it. Mm -hmm. And like both of us, cause we're from Canada, it took me six or seven years just to get booked outside of like my own country. So really, oh yeah. So like the first thing I did was Cleveland AIW and then Chicago AAW, which you can watch on the High Spots Network, best nine ninety nine in the biz. But uh, so it took us a while to actually like start traveling. But by that time, we had so much experience and like confidence that we were like, okay, like we're ready for. You were ready for the opportunity. Yeah. Whereas like I see, especially with so many people getting signed now all those like positions are being filled so quickly and contracts are being thrown at anyone that has like any kind of buzz and I feel like people live on Twitter too much and they don't actually pay attention to like the fundamentals of someone's ring work sure and then we're the ones that have to have the matches with them <laughs> whatever like that <laughs> yeah but that that's the nature of the beast and like everything is being switched out and people are taking positions and stuff like that but yeah back to you being awesome at your job and uh, getting really good really fast so like what was the trajectory of your career like how did you go from essentially buying your first pair of boots and then becoming a star like I want fairly quickly I don't know I didn't so I never grew up wanting to be a wrestler I always wanted to do musical theater how great yeah I was like oh <laughs> that's amazing how much money do I gotta pay you to sing something right now oh, no, I will not I will not I'm probably awful I've been saying it forever you, you said musical theater not acting no musical I, theater I growing up I like all through middle school and high school I was in all the school musicals same yeah um, which ones did you do uh, we did the music man we did Aladdin you did Aladdin who were you oh my god I was so pissed uh, we Jasmine? Were Aladdin? No. Oh, I did a podcast. Izzy Lover was Jasmine. Well, you know, remember the name? <laughs> I oh, remember. that's some real heat. I was. Do you remember, like, at the beginning of the cartoon, the three little narrator guys that sing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was Will Smith. <laughs> no. Well, he turned out well, to be the genie, genie but, but he was kind of the narrator at the beginning. Damn. Should have been Jasmine. I did a podcast, and they said name Disney characters on the Impact roster, and I think I said Jasmine for you, because I was like, she's part of this prestigious family, but she kind of goes off on her own. She's like strong and black independent. Hair. I mean, yeah, also black hair and Really good tan. heart, really yeah. nice. Yeah. And talks to peasants. <laughs> talks to peasants like me in the roster. No, but band. literally, theater and choir was like the only thing that got me through middle school and high school, because I hated it. I hated going to school. Because my brother and my sister that were older than me had uh, a lot of the same teachers. My brother was a bad kid, and so they were like, oh, this is Tanner's sister. And I think that they like treated me a different sister. way. So My sister hated school because of the same thing. Really? I'm the older brother. I was like the class clown. I, I can dated see it. all the girls, so she was just like, Ugh. <laughs> uh, I get it. But it did. I, I looked forward to theater class. Like, I loved it. Um... And then my parents always put me, they put me in Charlotte Children's Theater. I did the North Carolina Shakespeare recitation competition. I did like, like anything theater that I could do, I did it. Um, and then when I turned 18, I got kicked out of my house. I lived on my own for a year and didn't talk to my whole family for a year. Like they cut my phone off. Like do I had you a, want to talk about what got you kicked out or? Well, it was just like it, a lot I'm of I'm a dad things. now. So like this stuff is like so interesting to me because like, I don't know. Like, I just look at my kid and, like, man, she could be the worst sometimes because she's a little tough. Sure. She's two. Terrible twos. Like, she's slapping things over, literally hitting our dogs. And I'm like, oh, my God, how are we going to train this thing to not be, like, a jerk? Yeah. 
I don't think I could ever kick out my own kid. So, like, I want to know, like, what happened. Well, we had, like, a lot of family problems and stuff. Um, but my brother had already left to go live with my dad. My mm-hmm. little sister had already left to go live with my dad. My twin brother and sister were just born. And Yo, so what are you, five of you? Seven. Seven? Seven of us. That's not, like, um, a, this day and age kind of thing. Like, no. I grew up with three siblings, so there's four of us. And even when we were growing up, people were like, that's crazy. Really? Like, how did your parents do it? Seven? That's never boring. There's never a dull moment. No, 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 no. I, I, I get stir crazy in my house because when it gets quiet. My wife's like, what's wrong with weird, you? Because it's weird, right? I grew up with like people double stomping my nuts all day. Yeah, like, like sitting it. down and watching TV isn't a thing. Like yeah. You don't just do no, that. Yeah. No. <laughs> There's always something. Someone's fighting or something's yeah. spilling or broken. Or, <laughs> or yelling. Yeah, no. That's just the way it was. Loud. And crazy and like yeah. chaos, yeah. But um, I think so. My mom, she went through a bad phase where she was an alcoholic, and then she there was, was like okay. a lot of sorry. No, no, no. It's totally. She's sober now, and okay. uh, she's great. That's awesome. Uh, recovered and everything. But um, we went through like a bad period with our family with that, and then it kind of was a thing where everyone else was the problem for a while in our family, and then it kind of just I needed to go so that there was no more chaos because. I, there's just a lot of family stuff that went on. You know how it goes. Everyone has their own For sure. stuff. Um, but I remember I was allowed to take like my mattress and my dresser. And then my stepdad drove me to the... Uh, how old were you? I just turned 18. I was 18. Uh, I found a place I was renting a room at in downtown Charlotte. They took uh, my stuff to my house with me. I like dumped it in the front lawn and then uh, they left and I hadn't talked to them for like a whole year. I lived on my own for a year. They cut my phone off. It just didn't work one day. And I just had to like figure it out, learn how to be an adult. What was that like? Um, I think it was tricky for a little bit cause like I didn't have a lot of money then. Like right. I I found You're a job. 18 years old. Yeah, I, I found a job in downtown Charlotte. I worked at night times and then I worked in like a, a place called Bar Charlotte. It was this uh, like nightclub, 18 and up nightclub. Um, and I went to work at like 10 o'clock at night, got off at like two, stayed until like four, unless we went to like somewhere and went back home at like 7 a.m., yeah. slept all day, woke up, did it again. Um, and then quickly that got old and I think I got, oh, yeah. I think I got mixed up with like probably people that weren't the best for me and I knew, honestly I knew that it wasn't for me, like that life. Um, but I remember I was sitting in my room one day in downtown Charlotte and I was like, Tessa, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing with your life? And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I, I was in college for my freshman year uh, at UNC Charlotte. I did their online program. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do or what I was working towards. It kind of just felt like I plateaued and I was yeah. doing like a day-to-day routine like every day. Uh, and so I looked up a wrestling school, which I don't know where it came from because... I was going to say, so what? how did you go from like doing college and just being like you know what, maybe I'll do that wrestling thing. Well, in 2012, the year my dad was inducted into the Hall of Fame for WWE, I went to Miami with my brothers and sisters for that, and they were all interested in going to, like, the cool places to eat or the beach or shopping or anything in Miami because we didn't go on, like, too many trips and stuff. Sure. Um, But I really wanted to, like, wake up at 5 a.m. and go to the radio interviews with my dad and Arn and, like, go to guest access and see this and hear this and just be around wrestling I thought it was so cool okay. and then uh, when we all got on the bus to go to the Hall of Fame American Airlines Arena we get off the bus and we're walking backstage and all these fans are like yelling for the four horsemen and I'm like my dad was always a wrestler my stepdad was always a wrestler my grandpa was always you know a wrestler like, okay, it was just... can you explain to me because I'm literally yeah. stupid and anyone watching your family tree how does it like sure so... who's who where does everyone my dad is Tully Blanchard, who is original Four Horsemen. My stepdad's Magnum TA, um, which is crazy. They had a famous I Quit match, Starcade 85. Still, like, one of my, all bias aside, one of my favorite matches of all time. And then my grandpa, Joe Blanchard, ran and founded Southwest Championship Wrestling back in, like, the territory days. And they brought the first wrestling to cable television before anyone. Okay, so even if she sucked, <laughs> I'd probably still be interviewing her. <laughs> you're, you're freaking amazing. Okay, sorry. Um, so let's go back. Where was I? What did I... Uh, so you were saying 
you were watching everyone do oh, yeah. interviews. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're getting sucked into wrestling. I see everyone like cheering for the four horsemen, like even just walking to dinner on the street. Like people are stopping my dad for pictures and stuff, and I'm like starting to realize like. Gosh, my dad was like a huge star. Mm-hmm. Like this is crazy. Still is. Um, but I really started to like understand it more just because I don't know, he was dad at home and like it was just something that he did before. It was before we were born even. Um but just being around that environment, so I think that's what sparked an interest. And uh after I, I from time to time I would think about it, but it was never something that I really pursued or like yeah put effort into like figuring out about and I looked up a wrestling school that day and I found high spots was like 20 25 minutes away from me yeah I showed up on a Tuesday because that's when they had training classes and I wanted to be a wrestler so Michael Bacucchio let me go in the back warehouse and watch it was George South Cedric Alexander Caleb Conley and some local talents all in the ring and I'm in high heels like dress not how you show up to wrestling school but I didn't know I didn't know anything about the indies or I just knew like from my dad. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure no one took me seriously. Like this girl with makeup on and high heels. Stop. Show up to wrestling I, school. I literally <laughs> bet you everyone was like, do you know whose kid that is? Do you know whose kid that is guys? <laughs> do you think we just. They're probably like, Oh, another wrestler's daughter. Trying no, this thing I, out. Oh yeah. I don't know. Uh, but I changed clothes. They let me get in the ring and I ran the ropes a few times, took a few bumps and I wasn't good, but they, uh, but I loved it, and I was like, this hurts, but I love this. Um, and I'm sure no one thought I was going to stick with it, but I did. And Cedric would help me so much. Caleb would help me so much. I learned so much They're from them. They're both so good. So good. Seeing them together, which not a lot of people have seen, is, like, unreal. Mm-hmm. Um, Cedric's probably someone who I trusted more than, like, anyone in the ring with my body. Like, I would try anything in the ring. I was never – I'd fearless if I was in the ring with You guys anyone. ever worked together? Yeah. Yeah? I wish I could work with him as the person I am now, though. Like, yeah? Yeah, our match was, I was green as goose shit. Like, okay, okay. good God. Uh, it was actually at WrestleCade weekend at a PWX really? show. Yeah, they had their pure tournament, and okay. it was in the Benton Convention Center. Damn, Crazy okay, enough. so full circle, we're here talking. Yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. Um, but I don't know, I fell in love with it, and I, I went to the ring as often as I could. Cedric would put an extra hours with me, same with Caleb. Um, and I would just be there as often as I could. Michael would like let me show up early or stay late or let us close up high spots after if oh, we could stay a few right. extra hours or whatever. Um, this is a movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But probably like a few months in, maybe like six months in, I want to say, I was in training. It was me and Cedric in the ring. And Michael came to the back warehouse and he like pulled me out of the ring. And Michael's like, let me talk to you for a second. And God, I remember it like it was yesterday because I was so freaked out. Michael was like, uh, you can't train here anymore. And I was like, what? Why? What, what are you talking about? Like, I thought it was ribbing me. And he was like, no, you, your dad doesn't know you're training and your family doesn't know. And I didn't know that. Like, if they find out, like, I'm helping you, like, I know them, like, this could be bad. And, and I was like, nope, don't worry. I'll, I'll handle it. Like, don't even Wait, worry. Wait, so they didn't, this whole time they didn't know? I never told anyone. What? I, I hadn't Oh, my them. God. I didn't Your entire family is like wrestling business, like <laughs> like running through their veins, and their daughter is secretly training to be a wrestler. Yeah, I didn't. Oh my god, me. I would kill my kid. I'd be like, <laughs> why would you not ask me for help? Why, like, why, why wouldn't you be like, hey, dad, what, what do you think I should do? Okay, why didn't you do that? <laughs> I just, I was probably stubborn in my head, and I hadn't talked to my family in a year. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. The last okay, time yeah. that I talked to them was like, it was weird. Was and, it the Mania weekend? Um. The last time that I had talked to them? Yeah. No, 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 no. Or was no. that this before was you after. left? That was way, be- like a few years before. Oh, okay. Um, But I just, or maybe a year before, yeah. 2012. Um, But I thought it would be weird. I thought it would be awkward. So I called my stepdad and I told him that I was trying to wrestle. They probably just, it was not something that I mentioned a yeah, lot. Yeah, they yeah. probably didn't take me too serious. Uh, But I let him know, like, hey, it's like 20 minutes from your house. Like, you guys can come check out training. Or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And so the next Tuesday, they didn't show up. But the Tuesday after that, uh, my stepdad rolled in with my little brother. And Cedric and I were in the ring. And I was like, hell yeah, Cedric. Let's do our thing. Like, we just knew each other so well. And we could just go in there and just run spots. And it was uh, just so natural. And I was just super excited. I was like, let's do our thing. And afterwards, I remember I went to the turnbuckle. And my stepdad rolled up. And he was like, well, you're not good. But you have it. 
he was like, now you got to go out there and you got to become undeniable. And that's where all that comes from. Oh, it just, oh my God. <laughs> it you just, read this shit before you came? <laughs> I just got to chill. It's crazy, okay. right? But that's, it always just stuck with me. Undeniable. Boy. Oh my God. That's <laughs> but so it just, crazy. it stuck with me. So that's always been in my head. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> that's such a cool story. Okay. No, my next question. This is the one. We'll talk about the Sandman thing later. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll, we'll, I, we got to get into that because that kind of ties into everything that's going on right now and like how you are literally changing professional wrestling. But we'll we'll save that for that. And you know, it's kind of important and everything. I want to know when in your career because you even said you showed up to training before you even signed up in high heels, makeup, and like dress nice. You and maybe like a select few other people, even on independence, no matter what, never show up not looking like a star. I, on the other hand, literally show up like this. Disney t-shirt. Julian Connerman showed up pretty nice. Well, look, I threw a, a cheap <laughs> suit on my wife got me at the Valley Village. It was still Armani, because I said, make sure it's name brand. I know they got that shit in there. Uh, but yeah, it was 40 bucks. I mean, I looked all right. World champ. I just don't know, like, it's so much work. How do you do it? How do you travel like that? Like, I don't think so. I maybe because it's something that matters to me. Like, I think perception is reality. It is. And 100%. if you carry yourself as a star, if you appear as one, I think it's just gonna naturally you, happen. And like, yeah, like I'm, I like, I'm, I'm telling you, like outsider looking in, like, well, that's why I said, how long have you been wrestling? Because you carry yourself like you've been doing this your whole life. I mean, it's been part of your life your whole life. So maybe that was part of it. Or like doing, seeing like your dad do his interviews and stuff like that. Like maybe you saw them nice and dressed up or how they handled themselves. They're always wearing sick jewelry. Or, like you always look the part. I always pay attention to detail though too. One thing my dad taught me actually was like uh, in everyday life, for instance, let's say like I'm going through airport security or whatnot. Uh, there's someone who just kind of like rubs me the wrong way or a, a stranger and I'm just like, eh, I don't really like them depict that like why yeah. why don't you like them what are they doing that's pissing you off and like steal those characteristics um, just pay attention to everyday life yeah uh, details matter perception is reality like yeah. I, I believe that so much yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know if you if you, looking the parts like part of it I, I strongly believe that like in today's day not too penny not too many people know how to carry themselves as a champion I went to like an indie show in San Antonio and the tag team champions got in the ring talking about how great they are, talking about we're the best tag team, we're this, we're that. And you know what? Maybe, like the way they were saying it, maybe I would believe them, but they showed up in t-shirts, gym shorts, and some slides. And they just, I didn't believe it. <laughs> but the guys that I looked up to, like on the indies, like Colt Cabana or Chris Hero or like Kevin Steen, if I showed up in a suit, and those guys were on the show, they for sure would have been like, come on, buddy. But I think it's different, like, case-by-case case scenario. It all depends on, like, who you are, like, true, what your true, part true, is. True, like, true. I think you and Josh look like stars. Every time y'all go to the ring, y'all look like stars. We're getting you matching carry... track suits, so... There you go. <laughs> there you go. But honestly, it's because of, like, you and Taya and Daga. Like, you guys show up and you guys... That's right, Daga, I'm talking about you. He's handsome, on a different level. handsome bastard. <laughs> but, like, now, me and, and Josh and I are like, yo, like... We're the champs. Like, we should at least, like, you know, have, like, something. So we're like, okay, well, let's keep it athletic, but we'll make it look professional. So we're getting matched. You guys are two suits. of the faces of the company. Right, yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, maybe it's our time to, you know, start investing in the other things, like, outside of wrestling. And I feel like you got that so quick. Like, I've been wrestling 13, 12, 13 years. And just now I'm, like, worrying about, like, how do I look when I show up to the venue? And, like, you know what I mean? Like, before it was, like how do I do this move in my match tonight or blah, 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 or what's my angle or shit like that. But like, I've been noticing success come to people that focus on a lot of the other things. So it's cool. I think if you just act the part, you play the part, you look the part, you carry yourself to that higher standard. I think it just naturally happens. Right. You know what I mean? People see you in that light and maybe that'll affect the way you're booked. Maybe that'll affect the way that those people in the office sure. see you. Maybe it'll, you know what I mean? Maybe people will treat you differently because they well, see the you in Well, the people that are in way. control are human too. So like, yeah, they're, they could be intimidated or they could be like, Oh damn. Okay. This guy's a star. Like I thought it was so funny. We do that like silly throwback show. Mm -hmm. 
the amount of people that contacted me after to be like, I never looked at you like a main event star, but after seeing that goofy show, it was so. It was right. It was right. Like I was like, what? I I was myself. I cut the same promo. But it was I, I've great, held dude. belts before. When I wore a cheap suit and I have my chest out with a chain, and now all of a sudden you guys are like, oh wow, you know Ethan Page might have a main event player in him. It's like you could dress it any way you want. Because they don't get to see that side of you on Impact. True. Cause that's you, true. Like. You and Josh do so well and balance each other out so well. But, like, seeing you in that singles light was... Like, it did. It felt right. You sure. know what I mean? Like, it, it was great. It was fun. But to me, We were like, this so much fun. You know what? It was like... That was our Christmas party, I felt like. Like, we all just got to, like, not stress about anything. Play characters that we have no emotional or even financial investment in. So, like, if Tessa Blanchard lost that night, it didn't matter because you were playing a character. Or if Ethan Page, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter because I'm... Julian Cumberbund. This isn't even me. Like, this is not my brand. Who gives a shit? So, like, people are giving us scripts or whatever, and they're just like, all right, this is what I want you to do tonight. Even Moose didn't argue. Yeah. So he's just like, this is DJ too large or whatever. What was cool about that show, too, was they kind of, like, told us the idea of yeah. our story, but we had the freedom to, like, create it. Right. Which was really cool. Yeah. Like, everyone was so relaxed, and it was just cool to, like, There was no it. stress that night. None. Like, None. Like, zero, zero, uh, zero, zero. Jordan and I were like, you know what? If we got to do this, let's just have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And I feel like every, Havoc everyone, even. Oh, Havoc was great. What a good promo. No one ever gets to see Havoc like that. Like, uh, it was, oh, it was awesome. It was great. That was very fun. I'm very I hope we excited. do more of those shows. I hope so, too. I want everyone to know that I pitched to Scott Demore that we film an entire series in, like, two or three days in, on, I pitched in the this same before location. I pitched you're such a I'm liar. Lying. You're such a liar. And we put it up on the thing that they have. It's called an app as well. But anyways, I know we're on this, so I can't. I can't promote other things. But yeah. So back to huh? Plug it. Plug it? Sure. Oh yeah, Impact, Impact and High Spots work together because there's the TNA show coming out. And we're both here right now. Yeah. Oh, also, yeah, that too. So yeah, Impact Plus app. But anyways, yeah. The yeah, really bigger, the de- way bigger okay, deal than anyways. it needed to be. Yeah. You're so dramatic. I am. That's what this is, though. Drama. See those red lights? That means Julian Lee. All ego, unfiltered. That's right. No, wait, what? Are you watching their vlogs? <laughs> Who's they? Maria Manic and Teddy Hart. I may have seen something. Like yeah, that. we all did. <laughs> they did one vlog, and Teddy was like, I, I feel the love. By the way, this is not a shot at, at them. But he's like, I feel the love. We got a thousand people in 24 hours, and I was watching it with Hornswoggle, and then he goes, Yeah, it's all the fucking boys. <laughs> and I'm like, Yeah, because I woke up that day and got 37 text messages, and they were all, Have you seen this yet? With Me the too. Yep. I woke up and it was like, Text message, text message, text message. I was like, What in the heck? Oh my God. So, and then Josh tweets, He's like, uh, He's like, Well, sorry, Paige, your vlog is now number two. And I'm like, Yeah. You're right. He tweeted that? Oh, yeah. Oh, I gotta go retweet that. Oh, yeah. Because, man, <laughs> I mean, I hope you guys are all right. I was entertaining as hell, though. All right, back to you. I just needed to bring that keep up. Keep making you said, YouTube videos. You said unfiltered. Yes, keep making YouTube videos, guys. Please. Please. Uh, Unless you don't, and then Ethan can go back up to number one. Yeah. I'm okay with number two, though, as long as I'm thoroughly entertained. Okay. Why and when did you start doing intergender wrestling? Uh, well, it's actually, it's always something that I've loved uh, because I started training with the guys. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. So it's pretty natural. Yeah, for you, there right? wasn't too many girls in our training. Like, here and there, some would come and go and come and go. But uh, one thing that was always constant was Caleb and Cedric. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started traveling and... Here and there, I would have maybe like... Actually, maybe my first real intergender match was maybe... I wrestled Cedric, and then uh, I wrestled George South. How's that? <laughs> it was actually crazy. We were in Elkin, North Carolina. It was George's promotion. Is that on the High Spots Network? Probably not. Right. I don't even know like, if it's so filmed. It's probably not. Tracy Myers was there with Brian Hawks in the front row. Okay. Um, There's probably maybe like 20 people in the building. We were in Armory in Elkin, North Carolina. And that morning we showed up, cause George would have these shows on the weekend. He has his own ring and we go, we show, we help set up. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those, we went, we helped set up the ring. We had training all day long, um, all morning. Someone went in the armory and plugged in all the fans and George got out of the ring, went and unplugged every single one of them. He was so mad. He was like, no, it's gonna be hot in here. You have to be hot. Uh, unplug- he was so mad that the guy plugged in all those fans. 
So we get in, training all day. Uh, George picked like some people to be on the show, told us what our matches were. Um, I found out before the show I was going to wrestle George in the main event that night. Um, and then all day, all night long, like George is avoiding me, and like I'm like because he doesn't want to play anything. The show started, and I can't find George. And I'm yeah. like, has anyone seen George? And I'm trying to not look nervous, but I'm so nervous. How many matches um, at this point? Not me, a handful. So is maybe. this your first in like live audience intergender match? I think it might have been. <laughs> Imagine that's so, that's so wild. I was more nervous than my first match, and my fr- my first match ever sucked. It was, oh, yeah, I'll get to that in a minute. You're not wrestling your trainer, though. But George was avoiding me all night. And then the match before us, he comes in the back. He's like, finishes a schoolboy C out there. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> he, he, so we go out there. I didn't know times. I didn't know I didn't know anything. Um, we get out there. George takes care of me. We, we ended up going uh, 47 minutes. Yeah. All right. And 20 people in the armory. Maybe it's like Zane Riley is like right there under hard cam. Tracy and Brian. Uh, all the students were there. Um, and afterward, and George changed the finish even. He put me over for his heavyweight championship then, um, which I have not lost. Oh, damn. Which I have go. not lost. I think Boogie Woogie Man had it, but I didn't lose it. All right. <laughs> um but gosh, that night was so crazy because I learned a lot about myself and I gained a little bit more confidence in myself just to trust myself as a performer Not too. Not a lot like, of people do that. Like, I remember we were doing a TV taping in Mexico and Abyss was our agent. It was mm-hmm. me versus Willie Mack. And whatever, they gave us like whatever, it was like eight minutes and I planned four minutes. And uh, Abyss was like, I think you got to put more in there. And I was like, no. Like, I just want to be able to, because I don't, I mean, this is my first time, I've never worked in Mexico, I don't know what the fuck the crowd's going to be like, I just want to have enough time to either just call some shit out there, or work the crowd, or just change some shit up. Let us know when we have four minutes left, and then whatever we plan, we're going to do. But everything before, in between, we're just going to fucking, the blanks. yeah. And like, ever, I started doing that because my first TV match, the referee's yelling at me, he's like, you have one minute, you have one minute, and I've never felt it's more crazy. like... Oh my god, what the fuck am I doing? They're watching this, this is being filmed, it's gonna be on TV. Fuck, I suck, I suck, I suck. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's let that never happen again. I'm not gonna overplan anything ever again. I'm not gonna cram things in. I'm gonna leave space. I know what I do, I know what I'm good at. I can just do it on the fly. Like, I don't do anything crazy where I'll just be like, hey, Willie Mac, wanna take a cycle driver? Like, it'll be okay. And then ever since then, I've felt like way more comfortable with just like, yeah, myself as a performer. But like, you got to do that. So early, which is probably why you got so good. But with fast. TV, it's even harder because, like, it's almost better that like you're ready for the opportunity and you're so confident in your ability. Because when that's thrown at you, like, uh, hard cams here, this camera angle here, yeah. uh, two minutes left. Oh, they cut. Uh, they cut three minutes off the match. They, you know, those things are like, yeah, oh, crazy. But you get used to it now. Very we're quickly. so trained to yeah. it now, but. I remember my first pay-per-view with, uh, I wrestled Allie at Slammiversary, and they cut a good, I think it was three minutes off of our match, and that's a long time. That's a lot of stuff. And so we're trying to figure out, go home, and just figuring it out well, just making it all look natural. Right. It was crazy, like, learning the TV style, which I feel like Impact is really good at helping people with and agents. As a wrestler, even on the indies, just from doing Impact, it's helped me so much. Right? Like, so much. Even on just house show independent shows. Yeah. So much. With hard cam and camera angles and with the people, for sure. So back to intergender, sorry. Yeah. So you wrestled George South. Yes. You win the heavyweight championship. Uh, yeah, I, I think the transfer with, with Impact, though, is... I remember we were at Wrestle, the Pancakes and Pile Driver show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again. Um, and Don pulled me aside and asked so me. So wait, so wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're, we're going to get to yeah. that. But you've been doing these matches for a while. So like, yeah. before Impact, like, so after the George South match, you were just like, yeah, I wrestle dudes now. Yeah, anytime I got booked at it, like, it wasn't something that I, it was just natural. Like, I trained with the guys, why can't I wrestle the guys? Right. Um, and then I wrestled, like, 
some people that I learned a lot from who I look at is it may be intimidating me because I think they're some of the best in the world. Like I got to wrestle A.R. Fox, mm-hmm. uh, Scorpio Sky, Tracy Williams. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry. I, you said Scorpio Sky. I thought you said Too Cold Scorpio for a second. And I was Too about, Cold Scorpio. I was about to freak out. I was like, where's this match? How do I see it? Okay, sorry. Uh, keep going. But then I had uh, matches with like, for instance, Brian Cage. Him and I had a match at Wrestle Circus. I and he'll tell match. you our first match, I was a nervous wreck. Like, just from the first time we wrestled to like the next time we wrestled, it was like, Brian, wasn't it like crazy? I was like such a nervous wreck. Completely. Like, Brian's like, completely. could you just chill out? And I was going through like a lot of stuff at the time too. And Brian's been such like one of my best friends in wrestling, helped me through so much. Me but too, like, but I didn't get he's just like, Tessa, calm yeah. <laughs> down. Um, and then this past time we wrestled, it's like, you're a lot calmer this time. Heck yeah. chill. And, but I feel like too, because. For instance, that impact, I'll, some of the, the, uh, not just an impact, but the way guys play matches and the way guys think, it's very different from females. See, we've talked about this before, yeah. too. Like, you were like, yeah, the in-betweens, the transitions, yeah. you know, how they play Timing, things. transitions, a lot of things that I feel like girls neglect sometimes, um, where it's, I'll watch matches and I'm like, ah, oh, if they would have just, instead of putting someone somewhere, gave them this and they could naturally so, get there yeah. and then this flows so much better and it's a chain of Flow. events that just... Flow that's so my much favorite better. word. That's my favorite word to turn down ideas and matches. But I look at those <laughs> things now, and it's true. I didn't before. It was like this, and then this, and then this, and instead it can just all be one story. Yeah. And and things start to flow better, and the way guys think and the way they get into things, it it I feel like it's elevated my way of thinking almost. Um, and then I'm able to pour it into my matches with women too. Yeah, yeah. Um. Which I love wrestling women, I love wrestling guys, but I feel like wrestling the guys has forced me to elevate my way of thinking. Um, and it's got me a little bit more creative too. Uh, it surprised me with things that I'm even capable of that I didn't know I was. Um, it's given me a little bit more confidence in the ring too. It's helped me with my intensity. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, I might have said this before on one of these interviews, and I hope I don't get Candice in trouble, but Candice LeRae has said to me before, like she loves wrestling girls, but she prefers wrestling the guys. Because she knows that they'll base her for everything, like, properly. Yeah. So if she wants to do, like, the dive out DDT, like, she knows that they'll be able to do it properly. Or, like, a run off the top. The things and, that we're capable of, but yeah, you don't want to have the fear of not trusting someone. Right. Or, yeah, she said, like, someone's dropped her before. And it's yeah. Just like, but it's, it's just the way men are built. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I almost prefer it, too. Like, I love wrestling girls, and there's some girls who I, like... Have great chemistry with, and I just love wrestling them. But who? Uh, Ty is one of them. I love wrestling Ty. Um, Britt Baker. I love wrestling her. Um, Jordan Grace. I like wrestling her. I like wrestling everyone. <laughs> pretty much. Dang, it's hard. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry. Let's go back to pancakes and pile drivers. Okay, so yeah, yeah so yeah. Don pulls me aside and asks how I felt about the intergender thing. It was like something that popped up in the office and. Uh, he said there was nothing like set in stone, but just wanted to get like how I felt on it. Um, and I let him know, I was like, yeah, I'd be cool with that. Like, uh, I was wrestling Ricky Shane Page that night even, and they, Love him. they Good watched him. Oh, he's so great. Yeah. Um, so much fun, that match. Gosh, so wait, so, so much wait. Fun. So they were asking if it was okay for their show, or they were asking if it was okay for Pancakes and Pile Drivers? How I felt if I wanted to do it. If in I, Impact? Yeah. Oh, so they watched you versus Ricky? Yeah. Why didn't you give Ricky a job then, too? What the? Anyways. We so, thought he was going to. They all came and complimented Ricky that night. Like, he did so great. We don't have a Abyss no more. He's the same size. Anyways, sorry. There we go. Sorry. Okay. So, you guys um, had that match at that show, and I heard it was epic. Oh, Ricky's awesome. Yeah. And he brings it, too. Like, I like it when, like, guys don't hold back. Like, they'll actually, like, go in there and tear it up with me. Like, it's so much fun. Yeah. Um... But yeah, so we, we had that match, and, and Don talked to me about that, and uh, it was kind of something that they mentioned here and there. I got a few phone calls about it, uh, and then it came to be. It, yeah. They started like transferring over into it. It was just kind of something they talked about for a while. Just so wild, because at the time, you were like one of the biggest heels in the company. And, yeah. And then it was literally like, a, like flicking a switch in the same taping. It was just like, boop, nope, she's babyface now. And I was real nervous about it. I, I, I was nervous. For you guys, because I knew how much heat you got and like how well you played the character, and like, man. And then it was just like, nah, she's just badass as hell, and we're supposed to like her now. And it worked. Well, I had a. Gail's helped me with it a lot, and then talking to Dawn and Scott, and 
Uh, Jimmy Jacobs has helped me a lot with it too. Just he's creatively really smart. Yeah. Um, I was real nervous just because it was a different element. But I want to be the most. Ver- I've always said that when I started wrestling, like I want to be as versatile as I can be. Yeah. But I want to make history in my own way. My resume is like really important to me. I I don't. It's just something that I've always. I I, I want to do everything. Well, and I, I think it's go important everywhere. too because then it's not like you're a flash in the pan or like yeah. one hit wonder or oh do you remember that one match or that one run she had it's like no no no. do you remember she did this oh yeah she did this and then dude, she did this then she switched completely yeah. and then did this this and this like that's important i just i i want to do something important i was like that like i think you even are right before now. wrestling like my brother and i were joking around saying like the blanchard gene is like you have to be the best at whatever it is like whether i was waiting tables or i was in school or with theater or whatever or even wrestling like i want to be the best at it like i'm so competitive with myself internally um but i i don't know i just i want to make history in my own way in women's wrestling right now it's like a cool time they're going through this revolution thing that's a little bit of a marketing tool but it's it's a great time for women's wrestling right dive into that a little bit um well i don't know i just it, it's a it's a great time for women's wrestlers it is. and it is and while women are having the first this and the first that and the first this and the first that and it, it's great for the evolution of women's wrestling and where women are women are as athletes but i want to do all those things in a different way a way that's unique to me and I feel like impacts given me that opportunity with intergender wrestling sure. to do just something that hasn't really been done before and make yeah. history in my own way if that makes sense yeah like winning the world title right <laughs> fingers crossed hell yeah I think if anyone can do it I think it's gonna be you I hope it's you uh, and I remember hugging you after you beat Brian who just left to go do whatever he's doing probably eat more and work probably out. going to get food yeah I would assume uh, but I remember hugging you and being like, thanks, I have a daughter. Like, that was so nice. Like, just to see it. I remember like, that. Yeah, and it's just like, I never would have thought like that before I had a kid. Like, I would have been happy for you because we're friends. But, like, it's a different perspective now because it's like, I see, like, my kid watch whatever shows she watches. Like, she's she gravitates to the females in the shows. Like, whatever, she watches The Wiggles. It's like a show with a bunch of dudes and then there's one girl named Emma. I know who it is because my kid loves her. And, like, she does the dancing and stuff. And, like, you emulate that. So, it's, like, in pro wrestling, it's cool to see that in the future she'll be able to emulate, like, you beating up dudes. So, like, in school, she might tell some guys to fuck off if they talk to her the wrong way or treat her the wrong way. And it's, like, she sees that there's confident women in a physical sport that are willing to, like, push back against the opposite sex. So Yeah, and I've got a little sister at home, like, for little girls... I think it's really cool for little girls to be able to watch me or any other female wrestlers and be like, we can do it. You know, it might seem cliche or whatnot, but I think that's a really cool thing to empower, like, the next it's generation. Not, it's, not, it's not cliche. I think it's great. Like, even me personally, like, I go out of my way to make sure that, not even just in the public eye, even backstage, to set an example of how to treat women. And, like, I don't know. I just think that, like, assuming that every girl wants a hug. Like, I hate that. I also hate it the other way around where every girl wants to say hello and they offer a hug. I'm the stiff arm handshake guy, but uh, unless we're Which friends, is appropriate. I agree. But, like, I think that even us as men, we need to, like, set an example of what's right and wrong. And, like, sure. Yeah. So I think it's great. So keep doing it, please. <laughs> yeah, don't give up. I don't know. I th- I, like I said, I think, I think it's just a really cool thing. And even, like, you've got a daughter now, so you see it. And... My little sister, like, I, I, Impact came to our house uh, to interview some members of my family after Thanksgiving, and my little sister sat down for the interview, and I was in the next room, and I was listening, and she was like, they asked her, like, uh, Tessa's about to walk out January 12th at Hard to Kill, like, what's your message to her? And she was like, Tessa, I just want you to know, like, you can do it, and because of you, like, I know I can do it too, and that you are undeniable. And just, like, hearing that, I was just like, oh, my heart's melting right now. Yeah. Just, that's really cool. But wrestling's fake. <laughs> Fuck off. Like, that stuff gets me. Like, that. Like, I don't give a shit. Whatever. We we know that fucking shit's scripted. But, like, there's... there's It pours into real life. Yes. And there's intangible things that, like, you have to feel. You can't... You keep, like, sure, you can't touch it. But, like, there's, there's weight to it. And, like, this is one of those things. And it's organic, I think. Like, I don't think someone picked you. I think you got yourself there. 
Like, no one was, like, grooming you for this position, you know what I mean? Like... Oh, it makes me feel so good to hear you say that because that's something that was, like, really important to me when I started wrestling. Like, when I first started, I didn't really understand, like, the indies. I didn't know, like, that people aren't cool with everyone. Like, I didn't get it. So I'm going into, like, all women's lock, like, Shine or Shimmer, and this is one of the reasons I hated going to those places, and... Sorry to say it, but like I, I did not so enjoy pay it. Nine ninety nine. I didn't enjoy it because like I remember a few shimmer shows where I would literally show up. I was so new, but I would go in the bathroom and just cry my eyes out because I hated being there. Because people who were supposed to be veterans or whatnot would belittle some of the newer talent, or they would take advantage of them, or like post a list of moves that were like headlock, snapmare, blah blah blah, things that we couldn't use. Um, and Wait, just, I do that at Alpha One, but it's people's finishers. <laughs> finishers, yeah. Okay, okay, but, okay. And then I would have like some people who would say I'm only certain places because of my name, and I dealt with that so. Oh, I, yeah. Often. I would, I can only imagine. But what I had in my head was like, you know, my last name. It might get my foot in the door. It might get me in front of the right people. It might even get me an opportunity. I'm not going to apologize for it. But once I step into the ring, it doesn't do jack shit for me. It oh, doesn't take the bumps for me. It doesn't drive the miles for me. Hey, we've seen lots of second, third generation stars suck. So, don't But I wanted, I wanted to work so hard and put in those extra hours with Cedric. And just, I wanted to be good. And I wanted to, I didn't want to be good. I didn't want to be passable. I wanted to be great so that I can become one of the best in the world one day. And everyone, every comment that anyone's ever made would have no validity to it. Because it was just kind of like showed you guys yeah but that's good i, I like a little stubborn <laughs> no, no 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 don't lose that because i think now it's about to get even tougher for you <laughs> gosh but now like i'll see people who are like maybe we're just like so mean to me like i remember wrestlecade a few years ago like one of the girls went around and was like you know we're really gonna put the heat on tessa this this match and stuff and they were like be careful just because this girl's saying this and i'm like this is just mean for the sake of being mean it yep. sucks it's just people like that, but that's that's pro wrestling. Yeah. People love the sound of their own voice, and they love throwing around their weight. But it see, since I went through that and I had to deal with that sometimes, like, and I'm very mentally strong. Like I, I can almost turn any situation into something positive. That way, I can get through it. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm very confident in my mental strength, and not a lot of people are. But since I went through those things, I always said, like, if I had the opportunity or I got in the position where I was looked at in that way as, like, a, I don't really consider myself a veteran, but, like, if I was looked at like that to anyone, then I wouldn't treat them that way because it sucks to feel like that. It's and the worst. it sucks to go through that, like, so bad. Yep. It's the worst. I, like, there's a lot of experiences that I've had, like, same thing where I've seen guys treat fans like shit or treat wrestlers in the back like shit and it's just that's like that sticks with you it's like haunting like, yeah i never ever ever want to be looked at like that and like if there's ever a scenario like yesterday just this, this one kid said hello to me and he said his name and then after he was like it's nice to see you again and i was like well man like if you've already seen me and we've met just say it just say what's up yeah like i'm cool with that like yeah but people are so like on eggshells and weird and that's i don't want that like yeah we're all on the same show. Like, literally. The same ref is refing my match and your match. The same promoter decided to put you on the show and me on the show. That happened tonight. The ref was like, I don't know if you remember me, but I was like the outgoing ref in training with George South. And I'm like, dude, I know who you are. Yes! Thank you for being here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like yeah. I always tell my refs that too. I'm like, hey, it takes three people to have a good match at 100%, least. Like, 100%. But like, like you are saying, like, there's people that would like exploit that. It'd be like, oh, yeah. Whatever, nice yeah, good, you. good to see you. Right. Or like, just throw them to the side or yeah, whatnot. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I love our refs at Impact. All of them work so hard. Kid ref, Chris. Too hard. <laughs> ben. Too hard. Pizza tie, Ben. Oh my God, what he a sweetheart. He worked so hard. Yeah, he really. We were does. in Vegas and he was like downstairs getting coffee for everyone in the office just to be nice, like yeah. out of his own pocket. So, oh yeah, you, oh you gave me shit about that. Where I was like, pizza tie, you don't have to wear a pizza tie, and you're like. His name is Ben, and he can wear whatever he wants. And I was like, yeah, I know. I just, I, that's not what I meant. So we were talking to him, and he's like, I don't really think anyone knows my name. And me and Miguel, Doggo were like, Ben, you're cool as shit, Ben. We love you. And so now every time we talk to Ben, and Ben's actually, like, so cool. He is cool. Um, and he's like, I like wearing the pizza tie. I like that people, like, recognize me by that. 
Good. And I'm like, good, you gotta wear it forever and buy a few of them in case something happens to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta stock up on those ties. Stock up on the pizza ties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually it'll get so over you'll be selling them at the gimmick table. Actually, yes. Why not? Autograph the pizza ties. <laughs> okay. So, intergender wrestling's happening. It's great. You're changing the wrestling world. It's amazing. You're on a trajectory to be the first ever women's world heavyweight champion of a nationally televised company. I hope it happens. It's amazing. It's blowing me away. I love <laughs> seeing it. So, how the fuck does Sandman come up to you today <laughs> and say the shit that he said? So, get let's do the whole story. What are we at, Mike? Alright, yeah, we'll keep going. We, we know. Stretch okay. it out. We stretch it out. So, we're in the locker room at WrestleCade, and I wasn't going to wrestle tonight. I was going to introduce... How long? 25 to go. Sweet. This is just flown by. Oh, yeah. Um, but we're in the locker room, and uh, it's Taya, Jordan, Sue Young, and Rosemary. And I wasn't going to wrestle tonight because of my black eye. Literally... A group of the best women right now and most popular female wrestlers in the world, but no big deal. Keep going. So we're standing there, just I think their match was coming up. Sandman walks up, and we're like, "Cool, Sandman." Um, he was like, "What match are you, ladies?" And Taya says, "Oh, we're last." And he goes, Pfft. "What?" And then Taya's like, "Yeah, we're the main event." And he goes, "Well, you know that's wrong." And then all of us are kind of sitting there like. Wait, like all of us were like a little bit confused. Like, like maybe he's just kidding. You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like out of nowhere he walks up and says this, and we're just like, what? What's going on? Okay. So then he's just like, I've just gone around and asked 300 years worth of knowledge in the business. <laughs> and he said, uh, you could ask any male wrestler in this business. The women should not be last. And he's wait, going wait, into wait, hell. wait, 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 wait. So he came over. He go. He dropped the. That's wrong. Then left. Then came back. Well, so, he, no, this is the first time he was there. He did come back, but okay, he's okay. saying all this. Okay, so, oh, so he and then knew he's going you guys into, were last. He's going into uh, how WWE did this, and it was wrong, and this, and this, and this, and I'm like, he's like, whoa, I don't... Whoa, 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 we don't do this and this and this. We say everything. What did he say? <laughs> well, he's what like, did he say? He's like, uh, I, I started to talk back a little bit. I was like... Uh-huh, uh-huh, that's good. Because I started getting yeah. defensive, because oh, like... Yeah. The Tessa I know... Uh, if back. I'm passionate about something, uh -huh. like I will falls to the wall about oh, it. Oh yeah, Tessa don't take no shit. So I'm he I start talking and then he's like, Oh, I don't know who, who you guys are. I don't watch much TV, but I'm the Sandman and I'm like, Tessa Blanchard, nice to meet you. Um and and he, he's like, Oh, well I respect your family and this and this and this and this. I don't know. He just being Sandman. So then he walks away and we're just like, I can't believe that happened. And he's going over to Shane Douglas and a few of the ECW guys, and he continues to talk about it very loudly, and he's, like, bashing women's wrestling. And so I go over there, and I'm like, dude, you're being really disrespectful. Like, the women bust their asses. Like, not a lot of people can hold a candle to our knockouts division because our girls work so hard. A, a lot of companies that have women, uh, women that work hard and who can actually get in there and go and tear it up with the best of them just like the guys. You know, we're not looked at... A lot of us aren't looked at as women's wrestlers. We're just wrestlers now. And we can go out there and sometimes tear it up, have match of the night, even if we're not the main event. Yeah. And What does Sam and I ever do? Have entrance of the night? Anyways. Oh keep going. I don't know. I just felt like it was really, like, unnecessarily disrespectful. Right. Yeah. I agree with you. And I'm going to stand up for them if I can because, hell yeah, they deserve to be the main event. I said it in my promo tonight. Like, they deserve to be the main event, not because of a women's revolution or whatnot, just because they're that damn good. Yeah. Like, I loved their match tonight, and I think I said it tonight, like, they deserved it. And it, it just pissed me off that someone was like, well, girls can't do this. Girls are the bathroom break. Girls are the, you know, the semi-main. Girls the are, bathroom. you know what I mean? Like, that's all just, it's BS. It's BS, and they're, it's, it's horse shit. Like, it's stupid. I ah, I get riled up. I know, I love it. I love. Oh man. It's so oh mad about it. man. I love PG Tessa. <laughs> PG thirteen. Yeah. Man. Okay. Oh, I'm still stuck on this. Jordan tweeted about it too. Jordan I, Savage. Can we find it and tweet it and 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 read it out what loud? Was it? Let's let's pull, yeah. Let's oh. pull this up. Uh, Shout so, out to Jordan Grace. Yeah, right Jordan now. Grace was like, you know, 
I really want to tweet this, blah, 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 blah. Oh, funny, I'm right on her page. Oh, perfect. And I know she was second guessing it. And how, let's do a timeline. Okay, I'll read it. Sure. This is what Meatball tweeted. Meatball! <laughs> She's gonna be so pissed. Meatball, everyone tweet Jordan Grace no. right now and do hashtag Meatball. <laughs> Everyone tweet her hashtag meatball okay. and say Ethan told let me, me to. Explain, let me explain <laughs> again the situation. I just put myself in such a shitty situation before I read Oh, she's going to hate us. So Tessa, Daga, and myself were complimenting Jordan Jordan's and her strength. And like yeah. her muscle mass. And she's a physically she strong great. person. Yeah. So they were like, man, she's so like compact. Like what would she's that, so tight and her what body that is be tight. like? And I was like, oh, a meatball. And then they were like, oh, we're going to sell it right now. Because they thought it was funny. And I was like, oh, no, no. If you think that's funny, that means she's going to think I'm making fun of her. And I literally was like, don't ruin my friendship, Tessa. Is and Jordan Jordan saw that. That is how that happened, for sure. Then, jo then Jordan saw it, started walking over. And then they were like, oh, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. Because they were trying to. And Jordan's like, are you making fun of me? Exactly. So then I was like, well, now I have to explain myself. So anyways, yeah, go ahead. You Jordan's treat. nickname is Meatball. Yeah. And <laughs> Ethan yeah. dubbed her the Meatball. The Meatball? No. <laughs> no. Not the. That's even worse. Just Meatball? Yeah. Why can't she be the Meatball? Because I feel like that's more offensive. Like that's you, more you like. You said she's more like an Italian sausage. <laughs> no. <laughs> something. No, I said. Who said that? I said she's like a turkey meatball, like lean meat. And you guys were like 97.3. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm like you're like 97.3. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, that's, that's oh, a good, that was great. That's so great. now everyone, hashtag meatball, at Jordan Grace. Do it. All right. Well, I also have room for a new friend in my life. So if, uh, <laughs> if anyone else wants to DM me hilarious things all day, that'd be great. Okay. Trisha Parker tweeted one hour ago, and this has 586 replies. Of course it does. Cause 526 retweets. Jordan Grace. 3,003 likes. I'm going to click the tweet, see if that changed. Let's yep, see it. already. Oh, first reply Daga. already? Daga. What the fuck? And of course, it's a well-dressed man that's well-groomed, looks Hispanic. Yeah. Perfect. El Jefe. Okay, Perfect. here we go. This is her tweet. This is her tweet. Hey, remember that time? The Sandman. See, that's why I don't call her The Meatball. Hey, remember that time? The Sandman came up to the four women about to main event to tell us that women main eventing is wrong and any male wrestler with any sort of experience would agree. What is this? 1998? No, it was tonight, December 2019. I think it's November. <laughs> Wait. It is November, right? I don't know how to check the Dumb date. Jordan. How, is it November? It's totally November. Tomorrow's the first. Yeah, November. <laughs> is anyone jumping on her about that? No, we should. Oh, it's no, it's still November. Let me have this one, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, has anyone liked that in... Landstorm, you being off by a few hours is the problem with this story. <laughs> yes, Lance. Boo. I love it. Be supportive. Retweet it tomorrow. It'll be authentic then. There you go. It's December tomorrow. Or now. It's getting pretty late. But, um, okay, has anyone in your career, let's do negatives and positives, has anyone in your career gone out of their way, like the Sandman just did, uh, to kind of like try and push you down or try and hold you back, and vice versa, has anyone uplifted you or motivated you um, to like help you out? Uh, I don't really like to talk negatively about people, but I did have one situation. That's all I'm looking for. Just uh, one, one's a great. few years ago at Lucha Underground where I wrestled a girl and it was a dark match okay. and I was only two years in so it must have been three almost four it'll be four years ago in January okay um and we were a dark match we spent hours going over our match step by step by step in the practice ring Paul Lennon was our agent and uh they had a practice ring I remember yeah I remember a That's comment dope. the girl made to me that day was... Would you ever repeat what you, what you can say right now? The comment? Yeah. Yeah, well, she said, I didn't have a family name. I had to work for everything that I have from the streets. From the streets? And that was... You, got, you left your home at eight... So that this is, this is a big part of 
why I have respect for you now after this freaking interview is that like yeah you know what you had like this big dynasty behind you and you do have a big name fucking if I was 18 years old and I got kicked out and like I was a big dude then too and like looked manly I probably could have got a decent job I still would have been like I don't know what the fuck to do I literally just learned how to do my laundry last year like I, I wouldn't have known what the fuck to do. You're 18 years old. You're from the fucking streets. Shut up. Like I grew up fast because of that, though. No like, shit. I, think it, I, no I had shit. to figure it out. Like, that is, that's not adult. fucking Silver Spoon. Anyways, but I don't know. I don't anyways. go around like saying all those things. But this girl told me that. And I remember I didn't I didn't comment back too much because, like, I don't, I'm there for a tryout match. I'm there to, like, I'm not there to, like, I probably, I wasn't as confident in my ability what, in myself what, what, then. What did you do? Or what did... The, your opponent assume you did to even have that come out of her mouth. Well, what they... I remember she asked me, she was like, who is Tessa Blanchard? Who is Tessa Blanchard, the character? And, like, was, like, asking me those questions. Was she so, the producer? I didn't really know what that meant. And I, I really didn't know who I was, so I guess that's an appropriate answer. I had no idea. Um, I couldn't answer that now. I'd be like, I don't know. Find out on my entrance. I don't know. But I remember I just... I kept my mouth shut. And, like, sure. even Paul kind of, like, was just like... Yeah, it's yeah, cool, yeah. Tessa. Like he's so cool. Uh, Paul's the man. It was my first time working in California. If I'm being completely honest, I didn't know if anyone was gonna know who I was. I was really nervous about it. Like, what if I go out there and it's just quiet? Right. And, uh, so we were the dark match that night. She went out first. I came out second, and they knew who I was. Like people were like holding up four fingers, and like they actually cheered for me, and like it was cool. Yeah, of course. Um, first thing that happened in the match, we lock up. She rolls back to give me a drag. Instead, you see her. I, we go back and rewatch it. She pulls me straight down. I feel something. I think my shoulder's out of place. I look over at the producer. I shake my head no. Uh, but I want to keep going with the match. Like, this is a great opportunity, right? Uh, we go to lock up again, and I say to put me in a hold because I need to pop my shoulder back into place. Uh, she puts me in a hold, and I'm trying to pop it, trying to pop it. It's not going. She's like, are you good yet? And I wasn't good yet. She gives me a few more seconds. Uh... And then I was like, all right, I'm good to go. We tried so to keep... did pop it in? I, I know it wouldn't go, but I was like, I was still trying to get through the match. Oh my God, Tessa. Uh, we did a few more things. I remember I took like a T-bone suplex and something else. I don't remember. It was very short. Uh, but I remember she's chopping it. She has me in a chicken wing pulling on it. To try and, and pop it in or to fuck with you? One, one or the other, okay. I don't really know, but anyways, I... Sure. Match ends, and I go to the back. Brian Cage and uh, Ricochet and the producer, they're all right there, and she's like, they're all like, everyone was watching in the green room, and they're at Brian, and they're like, what the hell was that? Like, what's going on? Like, And I'm like, can someone take me to the hospital? And she's like, well, the girl that I wrestled, well, she's only been in the, ring, in the, uh, in the business for two years. She should know how to protect herself. To this very day, to this very day. and I don't tell this story like publicly normally, but she just went on an interview and talked crap about me for seven minutes straight. So I'll go ahead and do it. <laughs> um, but she, to this very day, okay, to this very day, she has never once asked, "Hey, how was your surgery? Hey, I'm sorry that happened." Whoa, to you. whoa, whoa! So you needed surgery after that? Oh, I had to go to emergency surgery. Uh, what happened what was what the fuck? And she didn't apologize. I don't even think she knows all this. I, cause I don't, uh, like I said, I didn't go like super public about Jeez. it or anything, but, uh, Is I went to the, scar? yeah. So I go to the, oh my God. I go to the hospital that night, uh, in Los Angeles and they tell me, uh, your collarbone's cracked. Uh, it just has to heal itself. There's nothing we can do for you. Never went in a doctor's room or anything. I'm in the hallway. They x-rayed it and then told me that. And I, I was like, I told the nurse, I said, I know my body and I know I messed up. And I started fighting with her. I was like, I know my body. And they gave me like a painkiller and we're like, there's nothing we can do. Um, you didn't get on a plane, did you? Well, I sat the whole next day at tapings in a sling. She said nothing to me the whole day. Uh, the next day I get in a plane, fly back to North Carolina. You flew with a like cracked bone? Isn't that like like dangerous? Um, probably. Is the cabin <laughs> pressure like... In, like as I was in the worst pain, oh my the God. worst pain. Uh, I remember I had to tie a actually, and a few of the girls. They helped me like get out of my gear, and I'm like trying to be okay because I don't like to cause a scene. I'm, sure, sure, sure. They, I had to cut my clothes off of me even. Yep. Um, but I, uh, I flew back to North Carolina, and my parents took me straight to 
the doctor that did my stepdad's spinal cord surgery and he was like uh, we did the test and everything my collarbone had snapped in half the bottom piece went down and into my chest three centimeters so it was on top of each other like this into my into my chest Ugh. so what they had to do was they in had the to, muscle yeah so they had to pull it out Ugh. reattach it and there's a screw going through it and then three on each side so seven screws in a plate they told me if i didn't go into emergency surgery that i would never lift my arm again so because it would set like that yeah i i couldn't lift it but here um so that Friday, I, I was put into surgery. George South was at the hospital before I even got there, Aww. waiting in the waiting room for me. Um, but I had the surgery. I was out for six months, and I went through like the worst depression. Uh, the day after my surgery, my boyfriend at the time broke up with me. Uh, my mom said the that- The day after your surgery? The day after. Um, my mom said that she saw me sitting in like the recliner like a zombie, like I was just, depressed I didn't know like I couldn't lift weights I couldn't work out I couldn't I was 110 pounds when I'm normally like 140 uh, I was eating applesauce for a week I was like to, to this day this girl has never said like hey how was your surgery hey I'm sorry even if it was an accident hey I'm sorry that happened to you I, nothing not a single word she probably doesn't even know like what all I went through or whatever um, but everyone has their own shit everyone goes through something it's it's actually something that made me stronger because uh, I had to pick myself up and be like, Tessa, get in the gym. Even if you can walk on the treadmill, if you can do something like you're going to beat this and you're stronger than this and your mind is stronger than this because some people would let this beat them, but you're not going to because your mind is stronger than this. And I did. I picked myself up and I was like, I went to the gym. I, I came back to wrestling a little bit sooner than I, than I was supposed to, but I went and I watched training just to like, because you can learn a lot from just watching. For like sure. I just wanted to be there and I, I wanted to like, like mentally I had to beat it first and then physically I could. Um, and it was hard cause like my mental, my, uh, my physical strength didn't come back right away and it was so hard for me. But I think I needed all of that to realize like I'm a strong individual and I don't need anybody else in my life and women can be strong. And as long as you have your mental strength that you can turn any situation into a positive. You just did it. literally like, you, it was so weird. It was like you took a hat off and put a different one on. Because, like, you were going through, like, yeah, this girl, whatever, she's a bitch. <laughs> like, she didn't check up on you. And, like, you could tell, like, your demeanor. And, like, you were, like, angry about it. And then, literally, it was like you passed through this threshold. And you were like, but you know what? It got me fucking bang and bang. And I was like, oh, my yeah. God. She's literally doing gonna... it right now on the camera. Spinning a negative into a positive. But you know what? Maybe this girl didn't like me for, like, certain reasons or maybe she'll say it was an accident or whatever the sure case jealousy, is, whatever we all know. it doesn't even matter maybe maybe not. but the thing is is like i won't go on an interview and talk about her for seven or eight minutes about bad things about her things that i just like i haven't even said a name yet. i think that she's talented and i think that she's one of the best women's wrestlers in the world but she's the only thing that holds herself back because of the way that she is that's the only thing that i'll ever say about her but she thinks it's because she doesn't have a cool last name. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, okay. So we did the negative. Now give me, give me a positive. Give me someone that's not Cedric, uh, <laughs> that has gone out of their way to help you. Like seeing you and Gail is like, like it's cool to be backstage because I know, like as a fan, like I watch TNA. I love TNA. It was the fucking best, and Gail was huge. Like she like changed women's wrestling. I think like especially the style of matches that they were having at the time. So to see like the passing of the torch and to be backstage, like sometimes I have to remind myself like, yo motherfucker, you're a fan of this shit. Like it's okay to be like, this is cool. So like, it's cool to see. Give me some, give me some names. Give me some people that have been like really inspirational. Well, Gail probably is one. I figured, because yeah. she's a, she's a huge mentor to a lot of the knockouts. Yeah. She's been there. She's lived it. She can uh, give us advice and, Yo, and she and... is the first one in the gym every loop. Always. I'm like, you're not even wrestling. What are she you doesn't doing? age. She's still hot. Yeah. Ah. Uh, but she's probably like a huge, a huge influence on me. Um, also, uh, Brian Cage. He's one of my best friends in wrestling, and he's helped me like through a lot of hard times that I've had, and helped me like keep my mental strength. Um, another one is like surprisingly Jake Chris. I don't know. If <laughs> when this is airing or whatnot, but Jake Chris is a huge one because he's someone who, uh, now that I'm wrestling the guys, not all the time. I don't normally get asked what I want to do yeah. or if I have ideas. Yeah. 
and Jake is someone who goes out of his way to make sure like I get to be creative too and I get to have my input Um, and he's someone who's I believe to be super underrated because he's so damn talented yeah I agree uh, and just a good person Mm -hmm. Um, so he's a huge one too okay so now here's I'm sorry I know you said 25 minutes we're gonna probably (laughs) another five for this question uh I, I, I enjoy interviewing female wrestlers because I want to ask them things that my wife wants to ask them. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> which, by the way, you're literally one of, if not my wife's favorite wrestler. Because I'm learning Spanish and you're not. That's not it. She thinks you're good at what you do. <laughs> but also, you do speak a little Spanish, which is pretty cool. Um, so, I was on FaceTime with her literally before we came here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, sorry, babe, give me one second. I have to text the room number to Tessa. And she was just like, you know... If I didn't know you, and I didn't know her, and I didn't know what you were about to do, <laughs> that'd be a pretty fucked up thing to say to your wife. And I'm like... She's the best for saying that. I'm like, what the fuck? Shut up. Oh, hold on. Give me one second. So I text you, and I'm like, all right, she knows. I'm like, okay, back to what we were talking about. And she's laughing or whatever. <laughs> how, how much of that is on the back of your mind when it comes to, like, like you're saying, like, Brian is a handsome man. Like, how much, like, you're like, okay, how close can I be friends with this person? Or, like, I'm friends with, uh, fucking Meatball. <laughs> so, like, you know, like, sure. like I'm caught, con- like, ca- not cautious, conscience about it. So, like, I think about that kind sure. of stuff. But as a female, I feel like it's even worse. Like, there's so much pressure on you guys to, like... Yeah, and you know I guess, I mean? like, like, I don't... You know, there might be people backstage that would be like... Sure. Oh, Tessa's hitting on me. You know what I mean? I totally get what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like... I feel like because my intentions are pure, I don't really have that like worry. See, like see. I don't, I don't really feel like that. Yeah. Um, but I can, I can totally get why people do. Uh, I forgot where I was going. Weird question, I, I, right? I, I, yeah, it, it's a little bit weird, <laughs> but like I, I know what it feels like to have someone not be loyal to you, and mm. it's not a good feeling, nope. especially as a woman. Like it's, it's a really shitty feeling. Um, and I would never want to be the cause of another woman's pain. So I feel like I'm, I know boundaries and I am careful. Like, just cause I know maybe a lot of women, maybe there are women out there who do worry about that. And like, for sure, especially in the wrestling business, if someone's dating someone that's oh not my in the God. business. And we, well, not you or, or anyone at impact really, you guys all get to have your spouses work there too. But, uh, <laughs> your wife can totally become a wrestler. Hey, she'll be, she'll a luchadora. Be a, a luchadora. Or she'll be selling merch and she'll be great at it. But, <laughs> uh, but most couples, they have to spend time apart. So, like, you might be on the road somewhere with, yeah. like, friends of yours. And, yeah, like, that might cause, like, a ripple or something. But, but I feel not like you specifically, but you know what I'm saying. If a relationship has that trust. Yep. And, like, you got to have trust. Have like, to. One thing, that's one thing, I, like, I love about me and Miguel is, like, Daga is we trust each other 100%. And, like... If he, if he texted me right now and said, I'm out with a bunch of girls or whatnot, I wouldn't even worry. Right. Like, I really wouldn't. And right. if we're that secure in our relationship and we trust each other that yeah. much. And I feel like you almost have to have that in any relationship yeah, for yeah. it to be successful. That amount of trust. 100%. Like, I literally have a group chat. It's me, Jordan Grace, and Alley Cat. And they send me... <laughs> I've heard about this. They send me everything fucked up in wrestling. Uh-huh. And my wife, she's just like, you're insane. Like, any other woman would be like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm she like, gets you, though. I'm like, no, this is how I get my, like, cheese man. There you go. My cheese man. There you go. Which means, like, gossip. But, yeah, so, like, that's how I get it. Like, but it's all work for me. Like, everyone's the same. Sure. We're all just pro wrestlers. Yeah. Or entertainers. Or and what. your intentions are pure, so you don't even think of it exactly. like that. Exactly. Like, you have nothing to hide when your intentions are pure. Yeah. Like, you can leave your phone around. You can just talk freely. Let them yes. know everything oh, goes. When I hear about couples that are, like... Oh, you just leave your phone up? Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah? What do you, what do you mean? What do you have to hide? Yeah, what, you need, it needs to be attached to my hip the entire time? That's so sketchy. It's not like we're going to go through each other's things, but the freedom of it just being there, like it's... Exactly. We don't have anything to worry about. Our intentions are pure. Yeah. If your intentions aren't pure, then you probably got to look in the mirror and look into your own relationship. Then your relationship is not, not problem. undeniable. It's not undeniable. And that's a wrap for Egos and Migos with Tessa Blanchard. Thank you so much. Also, I'm so happy we became friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, High Spots. Best nine in not 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 cut that. <laughs> Best nine ninety nine in the biz.